The Olden World Written by Tsar Yoshi Chapter 156 Evening Guards Hey, who goes there? The flashlight unicorn's voice was jumpy, as if Gerardo had scared him slightly more than intended, his beam of light searching for the source of the sound of the Griffin landing. Hey, Gil, if this is a prank, the unicorn sighed, rapidly calming. All right, har har. Now if, ahem, Gerardo stepped squarely forward, intent on introducing himself. I am Gerardo Guillaume, Griffin adventurer extraordinaire. Pardon the intrusion into your very nice warehouse, but I very much need to talk to someone important. Can you, perchance, take me to Shine Spark? What the? The unicorn blinked, horn flickering, jaw slack against his gray uniform. Gerardo nodded. Once again, I apologize for this somewhat awkward and hasty meeting. If at all possible, might I see someone important? The unicorn took a step back. Then he called over his shoulder, Egal, get your fat rear over here. There is a giant griffin standing right in front of me. Seriously? A distant voice called back, accompanied by the clatter of hooves. No way, be right there. A giant griffin. Gerardo shook his head. I can't tell whether to take that as an insult or a compliment, but please. With a burst of teleportation, a very round stallion appeared by the first side, sporting a beard and a uniform that might have been custom tailored. Woo! he breathed, whistling. Well, I'll be. It's a griffin. He nodded in appreciation. And it's a big one. Gerardo's words caught in his throat, torn between what he wanted to say and what needed to be said. Actually, as far as griffins go, my size is quite average, he hastily interjected, but that is beside the point. Once more, I very much apologize for barging into your domain, but it is imperative that I talk with someone and... He frowned. Are the two of you even listening to a word I'm saying? Think he's with the spirit, said the first stallion to his partner, who was apparently named Egel. Egel shook his big head. I would give you that idea. You know of any griffins in the spirit? Besides, what if he is? The spirits think they're on our side. He eyed Gerardo Beadley. It's not like stuff to actually happen on night shifts, though, let alone when it's still evening. What even is his story, you think? Hello, Gerardo suspiciously waved. I am right here. Well then, the first stallion looked at his friend, then Gerardo, as if for the first time. A couple of questions, if you please. Friend or foe, how do you get in here? And if those answers aren't nefarious, how interested are you in being really popular? I... Gerardo cleared his throat. Friend, I assure you, I flew in for that window there, which was already broken when I arrived, and while I'll never say no to friends and allies, my number one goal is to speak with someone important, namely Shinespark. Is that at all possible? The stallion sized him up, and eventually the first extended a hoof. Name's Bartle, he informed of a nod. You don't seem like a saboteur, though I can't really say what you do seem to be. What's this you want to meet with the chief's daughter on? Egil rolled his eyes. Buddy, it's not gonna make her like you anymore whether you say her name, don't say her name, use a ton of honorifics or what, so just say Shine Spark like the rest of us. Seriously. Important matters, Gerardo managed. I've come from the Water District with information relating to this district's security, as the recently appointed facilities inspector for the defense force, who has presently felt the need to change sides, as it were. His eyes narrowed. In short, I have things to say your superiors would very much benefit from knowing. So you're big and important. What do you know? Egil laughed like a drum. Sure, we take him to the oasis? Hmm, I sure want to, Bartle hummed. We did just start our shift, though. And no pony will want to cover for us if we turn in with an excuse like this. Gerardo tipped his head. Pardon, he queried, looking between their hairy faces. The Oasis? That sounds less like the name of a leader's office, and more a bar of some sort. You could say that, Bartle said with a shrug. You couldn't if we didn't have Shine Spark, Egg added. I'm getting a feeling you don't really know her so well, do you? That... Gerardo grimaced. Technically, if it didn't answer my question. Question? Egil's thick, conjoined eyebrows rose. You made a statement, but 
And what I say is that evening shift can be done by Mobius if it's so important. He turned to leave, waiting for Bartle to follow. You two coming or what? Suddenly, there was a disturbance in the air behind Gerardo and Sharpie softly landed. That was reckless, she whispered, stiff-faced. You're lucky they didn't impale you. Eggle turned back around and his expression rose. Well, I'll be. It's a mare. He whistled in appreciation. And it's a hot one. Gerardo and Sharpie groaned, each for different reasons. Wisely, Gerardo stepped back, just in case things got violent. Wisely, Gerardo stepped back, just in case things got violent. But his precaution was fortunately unnecessary. I'm not eligible, Sharpie grunted, so don't waste your time. He's telling the truth. She pointed a wing at Gerardo, who stared back in uncertainty. We know something important to the Sosan leaders that we can't tell just anyone. So if either of you could take us to someone's office rather than this oasis place, it would be appreciated. The oasis kind of is the chief's shine sparks office, though, Bartle offered awkwardly. Oh, Gerardo blinked. Well, I suppose that is a sensible destination after all, then. If you wouldn't mind leading the way... Egel nodded, jaw swaying, and began a long march outward and to the side of the room. The only way I minded less is if you made me go back on duty once we get inside. It's been far, far too long since we've had anything new to talk about down there. Hold on, are you okay with this? Sharpie halted Gerardo with an outstretched wing before he could follow. This doesn't feel too easy? Like you're in danger? My job was to know when things don't smell right, and right now... You broke into a warehouse, ran into two guards, and now they want to take you to a hidden underground location with a code name that could either be Shinespark's office or a bar. Are you okay with this? Well, when you put it that way, Gerardo muttered, looking closely at the guards once again. Lady, please. Egil waved a hoof. Have you even heard of Sosa? There's so much nothingness and depression here, the last thing anyone wants is to make others feel bad. The Oasis is about having a good time, even when the world's buried your dreams under the number of dumps it's taken. He sized her up, eyes wandering over the stress lines all across her face. Something you kind of look like you need. Sharpie's pink eyes gazed back. How do I know your definition of a good time isn't the complete opposite of mine? Bartle frowned. We're trying to be friendly here. This is the best Sosa has to offer, and frankly, you're right about yourself. You did just trespass on a technically closed part of the factory without any clearance whatsoever. He huffed and looked away. Earth district hospitality and all that, you know? Do other ponies just not even want us hoping for the best? If I may, Jordo raised a talon, interjecting. Shinespog did tell me more or less any pony I ran across here would happily take me her way. And if we can't trust ponies who seem friendly and willing... How precisely are we to find her? This guy gets it, Egil belched, pointing a hoof. Fine, Sharpie sighed, relenting. I... She gritted her teeth. Apologize for being less trusting than a complete and utter optimist, and don't expect me to stay any longer than I have to. Bartle whistled. With an attitude like that, once you see it, you might find yourself changing your mind in a pretty quick hurry. End of chapter 156